Uh, so decision trees are very much a sort of commonly uh, used approach um, in health economic modeling. Um, I'd say decision trees and Markov models are probably the most uh, commonly discussed um, when discussing potential modeling approaches. Uh, so uh, to give a bit of an overview of a decision tree, um, it's very much set up in terms of uh, different branches um, modeling uh, discrete events. Uh, so we've got a diagram here. Uh, so starting off, uh, the start of a decision tree discusses whether a patient's receiving prophylaxis or not. Um, with the decision tree, what then happens is you reach a chance node, uh, which uh, allows you to go via a different uh, or compare to different options. Uh, so in this instance, you can go up to no event, uh, so if you've received an event, um, or you can go to the other uh, sort of branch, which will go to Venus uh, from this uh, embolism. With decision trees, what you then do is you then move through a series of events which classify you into uh, different categories. Um, the idea being that you continue along the different branches uh, relating to what status you are in until you reach the end of the branch uh, known as the terminal node. Uh, so these will be denoted by uh, sort of the triangle symbols at the end, um, at which point you'll accrue a uh, cost and quality, so quality representing the health benefit. Uh, for that specific branch. There are also probabilities uh, assigned to each specific branch. Uh, so the probability of a patient, for example, going to either no event or to VTE, um, the probabilities will sum to one uh, in that instance, uh, showing the different options that you have. You can then weight the uh, quality and cost outcome at the terminal nodes by the probability of a patient uh, ending up at that uh, specific node. And then what you do is you take the weighted average across each of the specific terminal nodes. Uh, so weighted by the probability of patients uh, getting to that specific node. Um, and then you're able to estimate an estimated, or sorry, an expected cost and an expected outcome. So an expected quality. For specific strengths and limitations to decision trees. Uh, so if we start with the strengths, uh, they provide a clear and transparent representation of the decision making process. Uh, so in instances such as the one that we have here with the diagram, it's clear to map out the specific options that a patient has at each point, and you're able to clearly and transparently move along the model uh, to reach the state at which the patient's at. They are highly adaptable and can model a wide range of healthcare scenarios. Uh, so these can be commonplace across different, uh, say, indications, um, not even related to sort of healthcare specific uh, cost factors modeling. Uh, they are very commonly used. Uh, they're logical sort of flow diagram uh, approaches um, and they are very, as said, adaptable across different scenarios. With decision trees, there are some key limitations. Uh, so the first one being that continuous variables uh, such as health states with continuous uh, sort of parameters being analyzed uh, are difficult to model. Um, so for example, uh, if we have a uh, sort of chronic uh, disease that we're looking at, um, patients that occur or reoccur um, different sort of clinical outcomes um, on a model cycle basis, uh, that'd be quite difficult uh, because the decision tree only specifically looks at discrete events uh, that we're looking at. So modeling long-term is difficult. Another limitation is that when the decision tree becomes quite um, complex, so there's specific, there's loads of different uh, branches that are required. So let's say if we expanded this three or four times over, it can be quite complicated and complex to look at, um, in which case uh, models such as a Markov model uh, might be used where you're able to identify a couple of health states and then you're able to define them um, and cover sort of each of the different potential events that a patient may have. 